Hey underwater photographers, this is Rand from Mosaic and Water Cameras and we are back with day 13 of the Redive Project. Just to remind you, the Redive Project is an Instagram challenge where we are inviting photographers from all over the world to share their amazing underwater photos one subject at a time. And just like every day, I will be sharing with you my own tips on how to shoot better photos of the daily subject. In the end, all of these tips will be united into the ultimate guide to shooting marine life underwater, which will be posted as an article on Mosaic Underwater Camera's blog so that you can access it on your future dive trips. So the theme for today is coral. Oh my god, that's a huge theme because there are almost 5,000 species of coral and it's kind of hard to fit everything in just one day, but we're, we're going to try nevertheless. So my first tip for you when shooting coral is coral is actually the first thing that you shoot when you're trying out new gear. So if you just got a new camera, you just got a new uh, housing or strobe or, or wetlands or any other type of gear, then your best bet is to actually try it out first on coral because coral doesn't move so much. Of course, it does sway in the current and the water, but it doesn't move that much. It's kind of static, so it's very easy to practice on it. And it is actually kind of beautiful, you know, not kind of, it's extremely beautiful. Especially if you look at it up close, you can see the amazing texture that you get uh, on the polyps. And there are so many different types of coral that it's just incredible. So testing out your new gear on coral is definitely a good idea. And then once you figure it out, uh, you can actually move to moving subjects and fish and other types of marine life that are a bit harder to shoot. Now my next tip is when you're shooting coral, just for the sake of shooting coral, then you want to look for texture because coral has such amazing texture that it really can hold up its own composition and can look great as a photo by itself without any type of fish or anything else that's complementing it. Uh, and my tip for you uh, when you're looking for texture, then you want to use maybe one strobe instead of using two strobes. You want to use one strobe from one side, so you're kind of using the side lighting in order to emphasize the texture on the coral. This is always a good idea, by the way. This is also a good idea when shooting fish with plenty of texture, just like uh, scorpion fish and perhaps even seahorses. When you're using side lighting, then you're actually emphasizing texture. So don't always use those two strobes from both sides. Sometimes you can turn one of them off and then simply use just one strobe to enhance the texture. Now, coral, the great thing about coral is it looks great whether you're shooting macro or wide angle. So you can get an amazing wide angle shot just like this one that I took in the Philippines where you have so many different types of coral and it's simply incredible. Or you can just zoom in and get really close on one coral polyp and get an amazing shot of just, you know, a macro shot of uh, one single polyp of a coral or just uh, an area of the coral that it looks great in macro. So whatever it is you're shooting, coral can always look amazing. Now, one of my personal favorite uh, types of coral is soft coral, and especially the red ones, that if you find them underwater, sometimes they don't look red because you've already lost, you're already too deep and you don't see red. But once you shine your strobe on them, boom, oh my God, you know, color explosion. So it looks incredible. Uh, I just, you know, I'm, I'm in love with the red coral, with red soft coral, and every time I see it underwater, I have to shoot it. Uh, if there are other subjects around it, like fish or marine life, you know, any type of marine life, it looks incredible. But even just that soft coral looks so good underwater with the red and the blue in the background. So definitely look for those and shoot them. Uh, another good idea is actually that when you're when you have large pelagic, like you know, uh, sharks and turtles and rays, uh, and you know, stuff that doesn't want to get very close to you and they kind of keep their distance. So the best bet that you can do to create a beautiful image is to choose a nice piece of coral right in front of you, place that in the foreground, and then have your large animals swimming in the background. So I'm not actually shooting a photo of a shark, I'm rather shooting a whole scene where I have the coral in the foreground and the shark in the background. And this makes a much nicer scene. If I would have shot this with just the coral, that would be kind of boring, you know, it's an okay shot. If it would be just the shark in the background, then it's too far. You can't really see anything. It's not too interesting. But when I have both of them together, I can create a really beautiful composition. And this is always a good idea to have something in your foreground and then something else going on in the background, 
preferably sharks. That's always great. And my last tip is actually a, a, a word of warning. So coral is the number one reason for scratched domes. So if you're using a dome underwater, one of the biggest hazards is coral, especially the hard coral, you know, brain corals and stuff like that. They are really, really hard. And if you don't notice, a lot of times when we're diving and we have our camera right, you know, beneath us, and we're not really covering the dome and not protecting it, if you dive too low, then you can actually scratch your dome on the coral. And I've personally done that myself, I'm ashamed to admit. And also I know a lot of other people that have scratched their domes, either by doing what I just uh, described or simply by getting too close with their dome and then just bumping into the coral. And it really takes, you know, just a tiny bump to scratch, to give it a nice scratch on the on the dome itself which is really hard to fix it's possible but it's really hard to fix and usually you end up just you know living with it and uh, deleting it in Photoshop or Lightroom uh, once it comes up in the photos so you really want to watch the corals maybe keep your dome cover on when you're not shooting that's a good idea or at least put your hand on it so that you're aware worst case you scratch your hand right but that's fixable fixing a dome is much harder than fixing a scratched hand so yeah that's my tip just beware of the corals when you have a dome. And this is it for today with the Redive Project. So uh, post your best photos of coral today and add the hashtag Redive Project by UW Cameras, which is Mosaic and Water Cameras Instagram handle. And I will see you tomorrow on the last day of the Redive Project. Take care.